Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pintel, and today's topic of discussion is pneumatic logic valves. Our objective is to examine two logic valves, specifically the AND or dual pressure valve and the OR or shuttle valve and their application in pneumatic systems. AND and OR valves are logic valves that make predictable decisions about certain inputs and are often used to control their operation of a larger air piloted pneumatic system. Both valves have two inputs and one output. An AND or dual pressure valve works like this. There must be a pilot signal at both inputs A and B for there to be an output. A red axe symbolizes the absence of an input or an output, whereas a green check mark symbolizes the presence of an input or an output. When neither A nor B receive an air pilot signal, the AND valve produces no output. When only A receives an air pilot signal, the AND valve produces no output. When only B receives an air pilot signal, the AND valve produces no output. Only when both A and B receive an air pilot signal does the AND valve produce output. In contrast, an OR or shuttle valve works like this. There must be a pilot signal at either input A or input B for there to be an output. When neither A nor B receive an air pilot signal, the OR valve produces no output. When only A receives an air pilot signal, the OR valve produces output. When only B receives an air pilot signal, the OR valve produces output. And finally, when both A and B receive an air pilot signal, the OR valve also produces output. Beyond the logical operation of these two valves, they also exhibit pressure selection. When both air pilot A and B are present for an AND valve, an AND valve selects the lowest of the two pressures. Whereas when both air pilot A and B are present for an OR valve, it selects the highest of the two pressures. A simple test circuit can be used to demonstrate the function of these two logic valves. Let's take a look at the AND or dual pressure valve first. The regulator on the left is set to 2 bar, or roughly 29 psi. The valve on the left blocks or passes a signal to input A. The regulator on the right is set to 3 bar, or roughly 43.5 psi. The valve on the right blocks or passes a signal to input B. You'll recall an AND valve behaves as follows. There must be a pilot signal at both inputs A and B for there to be an output. Additionally, when both air pilots A and B are present for an AND valve, it selects the lowest of the two pressures. When neither A nor B receive an air pilot signal, the AND valve produces no output. When only A receives an air pilot signal, the AND valve produces no output. When only B receives an air pilot signal, the AND valve produces no output. Only when both A and B receive an air pilot signal does the AND valve produce output. You will note the AND valve selects the lowest of the two pressures, notably A at 2 bar. Let's do the same thing for an OR valve. As previously, the regulator on the left is set to 2 bar, or roughly 29 psi. The valve on the left blocks or passes a signal to input A. The regulator on the right is set to 3 bar, or roughly 43.5 psi. The valve on the right blocks or passes a signal to input B. Recall an OR valve behaves as follows. There must be a pilot signal at either input A or B for there to be an output. Additionally, when both air pilots A and B are present for an OR valve, it selects the highest of the two pressures. When neither A nor B receive an air pilot signal, the OR valve produces no output. When only A receives an air pilot signal, the OR valve produces output. When only B receives an air pilot signal, the OR valve produces output. Finally, when both A and B receive an air pilot signal, the OR valve also produces output. You'll note the OR valve selects the highest of the two pressures, notably B at 3 bar. Now that you've got a general understanding of the basic operation of AND and OR valves, let's discuss two simple applications. AND valves are commonly used in safety circuits, which necessitate two or more conditions both be simultaneously true prior to moving an actuator. The classic example being a pneumatically operated press or a shear that necessitates an operator have both hands in a safe area prior to actuating it. In order to actuate the air piloted directional control valve, an operator must have one hand on push button A and the other hand on push button B. Only when both hands are in the clear, simultaneously actuating push button A and push button B can an operator extend the cylinder. OR valves, in contrast, are commonly used in pneumatic circuits which necessitate operation from more than one location. The classic example being an operator stationed some distance away and another station at the point of use. An operator sitting at a desk some distance away can extend and retract the cylinder using push button A. Similarly, a technician servicing the equipment wishing to test it out can extend and retract the cylinder using push button B at the point of use. Beyond logical operations, I'd like to highlight the pressure selection feature of the OR valve. 
Beyond logical function, this is quite a handy feature commonly employed in pneumatic systems necessitating a backup or alternative source. Consider some primary pneumatic source operating at 100 PSI and a backup accumulator charged at 90 PSI as inputs to an OR valve supplying some pneumatic system performing some critical operation. In ordinary circumstances, the OR valve passes the primary pneumatic source at 100 PSI to the system and blocks the backup. In the event of failure of the primary pneumatic source or when pressure in the primary pneumatic source catastrophically drops, the OR valve blocks the primary pneumatic source and passes the backup accumulator to the pneumatic system, allowing a period of time for an orderly shutdown. There are alternative methods to implementing logical or decision-making functions inside an air-piloted pneumatic systems, but they aren't nearly as pretty nor easy to implement as logic valves. For example, one could rig up an AND function using a series connection of two normally closed valves. If both valves are closed, there's no output. If valve A is open and valve B is closed, there's still no output. If valve A is closed and valve B is open, there's still no output. The only way to get any output is to open both valve A and valve B. Similarly, one could also rig up an OR function using a parallel connection of two normally closed valves. If both valves are closed, there's no output. If valve A is open and valve B is closed, there is output. If valve A is closed and valve B is open, there is output. Finally, when both valve A and B are open, there is output. These systems do exhibit logical AND and OR behavior. However, they're a little messy and do not respond well to this simple challenge. Turn an AND into an OR. Oftentimes, technicians are tasked with updating or modifying systems, and sometimes this may necessitate a change in logical function. To turn a series AND connection into a parallel OR connection, you'd have to lock out and tag out the system, disconnect valve B, find a T fitting for source connection to B, find another T fitting for the output, and then restart the system. Sounds like a bunch of work, and it is. To top it off, these implementations don't really function that well. For example, consider the parallel OR configuration when both valves A and B are open. In addition to forward passage to the output, these also allow undesirable reverse passage A into B and B into A. For this reason, logic valves are a much better choice. Let's say we start with valve A and B and we want to perform an AND function. Go and grab an AND valve off the shelf and plug it in. Done. Let's say you want to change this to an OR function. Too easy. Lock it out, tag it out, unplug the AND valve, grab an OR valve off the shelf and plug it in. Done. Also, you don't have any of the potentially undesirable backflow issues I mentioned earlier when you're using logic valves dedicated for this purpose. Now that we've got an idea how AND and OR valves function, let's take a quick look at some example air piloted pneumatic systems making use of logic valves. Consider valves A and B as inputs to an OR valve. The output of the OR, M, is one input to an AND valve, the other input being C. What logic function is this system performing and how does the system work? We'll examine digital systems in greater detail in later lectures, but one way to explore them without this necessary background is sheer brute force by exhausting all possible input scenarios. With three inputs, C, B, and A, each having two states, closed or open, you got eight possible scenarios. I've illustrated all possible combinations in this table. To make matters easier, I've also included an intermediary output of just the OR valve as a pilot signal M, which would be A or B. Using your understanding of AND and OR valves, can you fill out the rest of this table? By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. As one might expect, the OR valve produces an output M when signal is present at A or B. Intermediary signal M would look like this. The only way the AND gate produces output is when there is signal present at both M and C. Final output should look something like this. Ultimately, this system is performing the function a or B ANDed with C. Note the parentheses around A or B, meaning the logical OR operator is resolved first, i.e. intermediate output M before it's ANDed with C. Let's test the system in the simulation to see if we're right. With no signal present at C, B, A, the system yields no output. With no signal present at C, B and signal at A, the system yields no output. With no signal at C, A and signal at B, the system yields no output. With no signal at C and signal at BA, the system yields no output. With no signal at BA and signal at C, 
the system yields no output. With no signal at B and signal at CA, the system yields output. With no signal at A and signal at C and B, the system yields output. Finally, with signal at CBA, the system yields output. Consider the subtle change in the radically different performance exhibited by the system given the same inputs. You note all I've done is swap the connections to the logic valves. Looks like A is being ORed with the output of the AND valve, which has inputs B and C. Again, using the brute force technique, we've got eight possible scenarios in this table. You note I've included an intermediary output of just the AND valve as pilot signal end. Using your understanding of the AND and OR valves, can you fill out the rest of this table? By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. As one might expect, the AND valve produces an output at N only when signal is present at both B and C. Intermediary signal N would look like this. The OR gate produces an output when there is a signal present at either input A or N. Final output would look like this. Ultimately, this system is performing the function A or B and C. Note the parentheses around B and C, meaning the logical AND operator is resolved first, i.e. intermediary output N, before it's ORed with A. Let's test this system to see if we're right. With no signal at CBA, the system yields no output. With no signal at CB and a signal at A, the system yields output. With no signal at CA and a signal at B, the system yields no output. With no signal at C and a signal at BA, the system yields output. With no signal at BA and a signal at C, the system yields output. With no signal at B and a signal at CA, the system yields output. With no signal at A and a signal at CB, the system yields output. Finally, when signal exists at CBA, the system yields output. When we compare the first and second systems with each other, you note the different configurations of logic valves yield different system outputs given the same inputs. Depending upon application, one may choose one configuration over the other, or an entirely different configuration using different logic valves. All right, that's it for this quick introduction of logic valves. We'll be making use of them in later pneumatic circuits. In conclusion, this lecture examined pneumatic logic valves, specifically the AND or dual pressure valve and the OR or shuttle valve and their applications in pneumatic systems. We learned an AND valve produces output only when both A and B air pilot signals are present. Additionally, we learned an AND valve selects the lowest of two pressures. Similarly, we learned an OR valve produces output when either A or B air pilot signals are present. Additionally, we learned an OR valve selects the highest of two pressures. Lastly, we perform some brute force logical analysis of a couple different example air pilot and pneumatic systems employing different configurations of logic valves. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell you lazy lab partner about this resource. Be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.